As the drought wore on, there were some who claimed that Plains farmers themselves held the key to their own survival. We Americans have been the greatest destroyers of land, of any race or people, barbaric or civilized. Known as the father of soil conservation, Hugh Bennett was the leader of a new breed of agricultural experts. He argued that conservation techniques could restore farming to the Southern Plains. Bennett took his case to lawmakers on Capitol Hill. As he was about to testify, he learned that a great dust storm was heading towards the East Coast. The storm had already deposited 12 million tons of dust on Chicago, four pounds for each person in the city, and was poised to descend on the nation's capital. Bennett used every stalling tactic he could, managing to keep the committee in session until the dark gloom settled on Washington. This, gentlemen, he announced, is what I have been talking about. For the first time, Easterners smelled, breathed, and tasted the dust blowing off the southern plains. For years, before the dust storms, the federal government had regarded the soil as a limitless, indestructible resource. In a major shift, Washington now put its full weight and authority behind soil conservation. The Plains Forestry Project was originally authorized by President Roosevelt in an executive order that allotted approximately $15 million for drought relief. The first shelter belt in the nation was planted near Willow, Oklahoma. The first tree planted in this shelter belt was an Austrian pine on March 18, 1935. It was planted in what was called the number one shelter belt on my great-great-grandfather's uh, farm, who his name was Horace E. Curtis. From 1935 to 1942, the project planted about 20 million trees in 3,000 miles of shelter belts in western Oklahoma farms. The nationwide number was over 30,000 shelter belts containing approximately 220 million trees that stretched for over 18,000 miles.